Soils and sustainability. Biointensive food production systems have the capacity to build the soil up to 60 times faster than happens in nature. And in fact, for every pound of food eaten, it can produce up to 20 pounds of farmable soil. This is in contrast to conventional practices in the U.S., which results in six pounds of soil loss, of farmable soil getting lost. In developing countries, an average of 12 pounds of farmable soil are lost for every pound of food that's grown. We have to really talk about sustainability from a comprehensive perspective. Sustainability can be said to exist when the soil plant system can operate indefinitely at optimum vitality and fertility. The resources used to create and maintain a balanced system are never depleted. The system must recycle its resources it consumes without loss of efficiency and productivity. The soil depletion rate is less than or equal to the rate of soil formation. The system produces food with higher nutritional value than those currently grown by conventional agriculture. And last, the system will not compromise the ecology of the environment. Grow biointensive is equal to natu natural resource management. It produces a 6 to 67 to 88% reduction in water consumption per unit of production, 50% reduction in the amount of purchased fertilizer in organic fertilizer form required per unit of production, a 95 to 99% reduction in the amount of energy used per unit of production, a 100% increase in soil fertility while productivity increases and resources used decreases a 200 to 400% increase in calorie production per unit of area, and a 100% increase in income per unit of area. In a natural ecosystem, the fertility of the soil is maintained through the recycling of nutrients and the replenishment of organic matter only as much grows as soil can support. In our backyard garden and on farms, we interrupt the natural cycles and expect the soil to grow different kinds of plants. We often remove much of the so what the soil produces, eat it, and flush the nutrients away. We try to replenish the soil nutrients by purchasing fertilizers and compost. However, these products contain nutrients and organic matter produced by another area, usually without being replaced there. The goal for a healthy ecosystem in a sustainable backyard garden is to grow, is for the growing area to produce food while maintaining the fertility of the soil from within the garden itself. Creating such an ecosystem is a way to participate in the living process. In addition, it can actually allow you to grow all of your nutritional needs in your own backyard. Many gardeners begin by raising tomatoes, cucumbers, onions, green beans, lettuce in a small area. As the garden begins to flourish, potatoes, carrots, corn, and melons are often added. Once a garden is successful, other crops like dry beans, grains, can be added to these favorite vegetables. Just as important, however, are crops that can be used to replenish the soil, nutrients used by those food crops. One of the most important things about biointensive gardening is the growing of calorie crops. If we really want to grow our own food, we will need to plant crops that are high in calories, such as beans, dry beans, flour, corn, potatoes, and grains. The U.S. Department of Agriculture now states that we should eat two to four times more cereal grain and bean, dry beans crops than vegetable crops. These foods, along with fruits and nuts, are ones we grow abundantly with biointensive practices right in our own backyards. It is possible to grow all your food needs easily in a small area if you are eating a vegetarian diet 
and as much as 77% of your food needs if we were to include meat in our diets. A diet that is naturally sound needs to include an adequate amount of calories. The most important element and the most challenging one to grow in a small area. If we eat enough calories in a varied diet, we are almost certain to be getting enough protein. When thinking about gardening, we must consider how to grow crops that will provide as many calories as possible in a given area. Dry beans can provide a lot of calories per pound, but it takes a lot of space to grow enough dry beans to provide all or most of all of your calories. Grains are also efficient producers of calories per pound. We get a lot more potatoes out of a given area than dry beans. Even though a pound of potatoes has less than one-fifth the calories that are in a pound of dry beans, a small patch of potato produce a lot more calories in a given area than an equal area of pencil beans. The graph shown here can help you compare how many calories you get per pound from each calorie crop listed. From the graph you can see that beans and wheat contain many more calories per pound than potatoes. So it looks as though beans and wheat would be much better calorie crops than potatoes. You can also see in this graph that it takes a very small amount of area to grow one pound of potatoes and a much greater area to grow one pound of beans or wheat. This is because potatoes produce a much higher yield per unit of area than beans and wheat. The biotensile mid-range yield for potatoes is 200 pounds per 100 square feet, while the biotensile mid-range for beans and wheat is 10 pounds per 100 square feet. The following graph here shows how many square feet are needed to grow one person's calorie requirement for one year, assuming an average of 2,400 calories per day, which comes to about 870,000 calories per year. So you can see that although potatoes do not have nearly as many calories per pound as wheat or beans, potatoes are a more efficient calorie crop than beans or wheat in the garden other crops that can be very low calorie efficient like potatoes and sweet potatoes, garlic and parsnips. Grains like wheat, rye, barley, oat, flowers, corn, and amaranth take a larger area to produce a significant amount of calories, but they have an important benefit as well as providing the garden with calories. They provide a high amount of valuable dry material for the compost pile, which is food for the soil. Although dry beans are less efficient calorie crops than potatoes and do not produce much material for the compost pile, they are high calorie content and the fact that they can be easily stored qualify them for small area in your garden. Other possibly effective calorie crops are onions, turnips, leeks. In, s in some climates, with a longer growing season and good soil, it may be possible to plant these crops twice during the growing season and attain higher than mid-range mid yields in which they can be made more comparable to potatoes in efficiency. Another thing that we can grow in most of the biotensive gardens that many of us don't grow in gardens are nuts. These are a list of some of the nuts that they sell at the Edible Landscaping Seed Company in Virginia. As you can see on this list, you'd be surprised, but in this area, in the Mid-Atlantic region, there are certain almond varieties, there are certain chestnut varieties, there are certain uh, varieties of filberts, which in Europe they call these hazelnuts and certain pecan and walnut varieties that you can grow in your backyard to increase your caloric intake in your garden. Sweet potatoes, as we talked about, is a very valuable crop. It's almost a super vegetable and it's very easy to grow, even if you don't have a lot of space. 
And for those with really limited space, there's a variety of sweet potato called Bush Puerto Rico sweet potato, which grows upright in the habit. And the plant does not spread as much as traditionally grown sweet potatoes. There's another calorie carp, parsnips, and garlic. There's also a high calorie crop, which can be grown easily in the backyard in this region. If you really want fertility in your garden, as we said earlier, growing grains is the way to go. And also, another thing about growing grains is that the biomatter and the biomass portion of the plant can be put back into the soil so that acts as another way to sequester carbon from the atmosphere and place it back into the soil. Quinoa is another high protein grain which can be grown in this area. It grows better on the west coast though, but it's still there are varieties that can be grown in this area. And it provides many calories for the home diet. Wheat is another crop that can grow in this area. Now if you have a small garden, I guess you really can't really grow a lot of wheat. But what I would suggest is this, is that you and five, six, seven other gardeners grow wheat, harvest the grains, and then process it and share it among yourselves. That's the culture part of agriculture. Millet is another high protein grain. It's very nutritious and it grows well in this mid-Atlantic region. Another crop that we really need to grow more in gardens are cover crops. These cover crops create free fertilizer. They're nitrogen fixing. They extract nitrogen from the air and it's reconstituted and intensified in their root systems. And this provides nourishment for the soil, for the microorganisms, and also for sequestering different carbon dioxide and other elements in the atmosphere. Fava beans is another crop that is a legume that produces nitrogen. The picture at the top shows the nodules on the fava bean and this is where the nitrogen is produced in the plant. And also the fava beans are edible. So you get two bangs for your buck here. Another very important cover crop is vetch, another nitrogen fixing cover crop, which again adds free fertilizer for your soil and it helps feed the microorganisms, which produce increased soil fertility. Another grain crop, which can be used for two purposes, is the grain of sorghum can be used and the sorghum produces a liquid and almost like maple syrup can be used as a sweetener. It's a very valuable crop and can be grown in this area. So if we're talking about building the soil and we're building for the future, again the biointensive method talks about deep soil printed preparation, the use of compost, close space planting, synergistic planting of crop combinations so plants that are grown together enhance each other, carbon efficient crops, calorie efficient crops, and the use of open pollinated seeds. We will talk about some of these in part two of the biomtensive method. All of these things really go into helping and giving you a healthier soil. The compost that you make feeds the microhoriza, 
and the microanthropods in the soil. And healthy soils equals healthy foods equals healthy people. So two good reads are How to Grow Vegetables by John Jevons, and another good read is In the Defense of Food by Michael Pollan.